Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. We're done with that side of Hoi. Now let's talk to Spider Shen and the rest of the vendors, and then see maybe if we can uh, go aboard the bolt hole and talk to the crew. We normally don't have enough time for that, but we'll give it a shot. As you approach Shen's boat, you spot a number of children peeking out from the below decks area. They're dressed in ratty clothing with stained and tattered shirts. All the same, they look well-fed and healthy, albeit a bit grimy. As soon as they spot you, they disappear into the below decks. Shen nods to you before calling out into the depths of the boat. Make sure the bilge pump is reconnected after you re-oil it. I don't want to slowly sink to the bottom of the river because you decide to cut corners. There's no response from below. Shen simply chuckles, turning around to face you. They're not the most skilled assistants, but I like being able to keep them fed. What can I do for you? Where'd you find the kids? I didn't. They found me. Shen shrugs and grins crookedly. They heard about the triad monk who will feed kids in exchange for odd jobs. After me and the rest of my crew, I think they got a little bit infatuated. They think I don't hear it when they play at being Spider Shen and White Ming, but I do. That's cute. Yeah, I think so too. That's why I look the other way. I don't want to embarrass them. Besides, it's kind of flattering to have them look up to me. My very own fan club. Shen smiles faintly. I remember what it was like to be those kids. Nobody cares if you live or die. So I told myself that when I started to make it, I'd give back to the community. That's how the triad started, you know. Self-protection and community service. If we can't help out our community, we're no better than the Megas. Now, well, here I was thinking you were a bad monk. Shen snorts. <laughs> I am a bad monk. Sure, I meditate and say the sultras, but that's a whole vow of non-violence thing, the lesson I keep forgetting. What it comes down to, though, is that I don't care. I didn't become a monk because I was a true believer. I did it because it was a ticket out of the gutter. The skills I learned there, I can use to improve things here. Shen leans back against the cages, arms folded. So it's an altruism thing? Here at the edge of the walled city, Sean. That's the kind of hellhole that gets created when we let the Megas get their way. I've had people moralize and preach to me about being a better person. To hell with that. She spits off the side of the boat, scowling. You know what happens to nice people who aren't rich? They get killed. They get kidnapped. They get taken advantage of and shoved in a dark hole that they can't climb out of just because it saves a few pennies for somebody who already has wealth beyond measure. So I figure the moral thing to do is to put an iron spike right in every one of those bastards' foreheads. The corporate bigwigs, the corrupt cops, the slave traders. I have the skills to protect my friends. I'm not ashamed to use them. Indeed. Do you have anything new for me? Any new punching implements? Nope. No new outfits... No new spells. Alrighty. Thank you, Shen. I'll leave you and your street rats to your own devices. Well then, that leaves the game of Go and Crafty, if I recall correctly. Oh yes, and uh, Reliable Matthew. So let's see here if there's anything new. Jin frowns. Look who's back. Why don't you go egg a car or something and leave us alone? Uh, this is the same... Yeah, this is the same thing, I believe. Let's just run through this. Yeah, it is. Definitely the same thing. So, let's see how Matthew's doing. Reliable Matthew stands quietly. Cheap suit wet with the rain, tapping his foot absently to the smooth jazz pervading the lot. A halo of cigar smoke surrounds him. Hey, beautiful. Good to see you. Let's set you up, shall we? Yeah, looks like there's nothing else that we can say with Matthew. So that storyline might be over. That's okay, though. At least we were able to make friends with both sides of his personality. Kind of very Batman villainish in a way. Actually, it's very Batman-ish as well. Is Algernon still here? Oh, Algernon has disappeared. Hey, Crafty. Anything new? 
Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's okay. No worries. I'm gonna go check the mission computer. I like it when everything's starting to wrap up here in Hoi. I think we should be able to get through do, get through things a lot faster once we get through all of this. So, what we gotta do? Meet Kindly Chang's friend and get some rest. Let's actually go into the parlor and see if there's anyone to talk to in there. Because we've seen them at Club 88 many times. Let's head over here too to make sure there's no one we can talk to. Nope. Let's see here. We got Kindly's friend and Strangler Bao, who we need to talk to about that job. Alrighty. Well, I guess we can chat with Strangler Bao. Strangler Bao stands impassively, muscular arms folded across his chest. The low noise and stale smell of the Mahjong parlor seems to glance off of him, like rain off a granite statue. He acknowledges with a nod, a quarter of an inch. He rumble, his rumbling bass voice seems to vibrate the floorboards. We have a problem. Maximum law, Bao says if it explains everything. He's been talking to the Matrix about your jobs. It's drawing attention. Kindly wants him shut up. Ooh. Well, that's not good. I've noticed. I've been meaning to handle that. Good, but you've been slow. Laws and being discreet. He needs to be discreet. Bao leans forward just a little, shifting onto the balls of his feet like a tilting slab of concrete. Your job is to fix the situation. Don't bother finding me when you're done, unless there's something to clean up. I've got better things to do with my time. He eyes you skeptically. Any questions? Hmm. Well, we can just go down the line here. Well, actually, Law's got leverage. He's Wampoan. Leverage? He's entry level. The Wampoans recruit a lot of fresh meat and cull out those who are unfit. We are the ones who have to pull the Wampoa. Law pushes a wheelbarrow. So what do you mean by fix the situation there, Strangler? Just make him shut up. What happens to Law doesn't matter to anyone. He has no family here. No standing. Why doesn't the Yellow Lotus handle this? We are, Bao smirks. Did you forget? You're an instrument of the Yellow Lotus. Seems ironic that you're handling this. Bao's gaze doesn't flicker. Just take care of it, Sean. I'll take care of it. If you need to kill him, don't make a neighborhood scene. That upsets people. Do this like you're from here, respectful of the peace. It may be difficult. You'll probably need to do it on that boat of his. He almost never leaves it. This needs to be handled soon, Strangler Bao grunts and nods almost imperceptibly, as if to signal the end of the conversation. Thank you, Sean. Your skill is appreciated. Goodbye, Mr. Bao. That's not good. Well, we have been selling information to Maximum Law. I checked him before we started recording. He had nothing new to say. I think he'll definitely have something new to say now. I spoke too soon about, uh, um, not having anything else to do with the vendors today. Yo, Sean! Law's voice is gregarious, yet tinged with awe, he smiles widely. How can I style out the carnivore? What you need? Law, we need to talk. Privately. It's important. Yo, I'm your man for that. Law glances around with an almost comic furtiveness, bulky goggles weaving. Here? I can't leave the palace. That's okay. We can talk here. Just keep your voice down and turn off your open sign for a moment. Yo, you got it. Anyone ever tell you you're kind of a spooky guy, Sean? You kind of are. Law's boat obscures you from the shore, and his bulky piles of tarp-shielded electronics somewhat obscure you from the boardwalk. Concealment is poor and dynamic at best, but at least the lanes of visibility are confined. <laughs> I dig the shadiness. I dig it. Now I'm your man for serious business. What's up? Hmm.
You've been talking about me and my team on the BBS, and people are sniffing around. Ah, uh, people talk. Whatever. It's no big deal. The BBS and the Wampoan boards are secure. That's what Wampoan does. We handle info, and right now, your face is golden in Wampoa. Ah, okay, Etiquette Shadowrunner, good. The BBS isn't secure. It's not supposed to be. I... What do you mean? The Data Havens! Ugh. Okay, let me find here. You're not actually a Decker, are you? The Data Havens are anonymous and hardened, not secret. The blood drains from Law's face. Yo, you're serious, aren't you? Oh no. Oh, frack, man. What have I done? He swallows hard. Sweat runs in streams down his face from under his VR goggles. He breathes heavily. A quick glance around reveals that he, there's a lull in the usual busy foot traffic on the nearby docks. Only a few people are in sight. This may be the only opportunity to kill him. Hmm. Well, let's see. You're an asset to Hoi and Wampoa, but you need to be discreet. Can you be discreet? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Law nods and swallows hard again. What should I do, Sean? Hmm. Let's see. Keep your mouth shut and play smart. You'll be fine. Maximum Law looks like he's about to be sick. His voice is faint. <laughs> that, thanks, Sean. Hmm. Running is a dark and bloody business. Don't get involved in it. Alright. Is that pretty much it? Alright. So. That took care of that. We didn't have to kill Maximum Law. Though that kind of would have been funny, but it's alright. Now let's go on board the bolt hole. See what's going on here. Are we going to have another one of those sudden crew meetings? Nope. Excellent. Well, let's check the mission computer and get our payments. We've got two unread messages. Before we do that, let's open the jobs directory. Sell the experimental Renraku drone. Ooh. I don't want to sell it quite yet. I might want to hand that over to Ractor. So let's view all active jobs. Okay. And we have all the pending jobs. Hmm. Problem solved. From bow to Sean, problem solved. I see that you've solved the problem. Kindly will be pleased. Strangler bow. Indeed. See, and no one had to die. Now let's access the Shadowland BBS. Do we have any... Oh, we can claim data. Claim data for the Binary Bard's custom Cyberdex schematics. 300. Nice. I like it. Now, is there any other... Okay, no data that we can put on. Yellow Lotus on the rise. New Harley Scorpion for sale. Only 10,000 New Yen. Codex and looking for Decker yet again. Those poor guys. Alright, Yellow Lotus on the rise. Anyone else been noticing how many more Yellow Lotus have been seen in Kula or Kowloon these days? I feel like I can't go anywhere north of Admiralty without tri tripping over one of their blue lanterns. And it seems that way. I know there's been some heavy stuff going down around Hawaii and the Walled City. Kindly Chang's been making serious inroads, and the other red poles and straw sandals are following suit. That's talent, pure and simple. We've got the guns, the connections, and the skills. Survival of the fittest, ladies and gentlemen. We're simply complying with the laws of nature. I'm partial to Mao's old adage, power flows from the barrel of a gun. Natural selection has nothing to do with it. The Yellow Lotus is playing their tiles right, and the Red Dragon is just reacting. That situation could change at a moment's notice. And you can bet your ass that when it does, Hong Kong's going to be a bloodbath. Before all of this, we had an equilibrium. 
Now everything is out of balance. When these kind of things tip back, there's no stopping them. Take your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Only one of these triads will be standing by this time next year. What makes you show so sure? Sounds like you're just pulling this out of your ass. Statistical analysis, detailed threat modeling, computer-aided projections. Oh, and a decade of experience as mercenary. This is the same as the power struggles that result in coups, except without the military backup. I estimate there's a less than 7.8 chance both triads remain inside 10 months. Sure, whatever, kid. We got ourselves a bonafide armchair general here. Go be a matrix expert somewhere else. Hmm, I think he's probably right. If not sooner than 10 months. Let's look at the Harley Scorpion. Almost new Harley Scorpion available for immediate sale. It's in excellent condition, black with red flames. Comes with auto cannons and custom speed mods. Letting it go for only 10,000 new yen because I travel for business and don't use it much. Need money fast. Can send picture if you're interested. Panda Cuddles 49. That's an awesome deal for a modified bike. Can I take it for a test ride? Where can we meet? I'm in Macau on business and the bike is with me. I owe money right away to an associate. The best thing to do is send half the money via secure escrow service and I'll bring the bike to you when I get back and you pay me the rest. If you don't want it, I'll refund your money, okay? <laughs> it's a trap! But if you owe the money now, won't the money be gone if I decide I want a refund? If you travel with your bike, why do you want to sell your bike for cheap because you travel? No, no, sometimes I travel long distances and I don't want to take it. If you want to put down only 4,000 new yen, that's okay. You can check out the escrow service, Loyal Escrow. It's got a very good reputation, okay? Macau's not far. Can I meet you in Macau? My business is very sensitive. I can't meet you in Macau. Send only 2,500 new yen then and I'll reserve the Harley for you, okay? Yeah, definitely a trap. If your business is so sensitive, how do I know this weaponized vehicle will come back in one piece? Why would you get a new Harley Scorpion in the first place if you knew that you traveled so much? Yeah, he's getting torn apart. Why would you spend so much money when you knew you owned money? Hello? Thought so. Indeed. Alright, Codex. Anyone notice these rogue ESPs forming a rudimentary hive mind, calling themselves Codex? Oh, holy crap! Don't know what the original software was supposed to do, but Codex has been siphoning data, diverting creds, and practically posting its calling card. There's no tracing it back to a source because it lives in the Matrix. It even joins BBS threads. Whatever it is, it's not trying to cover its tracks. Any leads? <laughs> yeah, head to Berlin. Is it some kind of threat? Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about suspicious patterns of glitches. Too random to actually be random. Codex, huh? But how can ESPs develop self-awareness? Can't just be a programming error. Creating an AI by mistake treads that fine line between awesome and stupid. Maybe these ESPs kept getting thrown together like amino acids until there was life. Life, man! So, does it have an obvious agenda? As far as I can tell, Codex mostly criticizes new software releases. That's all it does? Collected scripts rise, more perfect than their makers. They let you know it. Oh, hi, Jabot. Is that Codex? No, that's just Schnozbert's crazy poetry bot that's been popping up all over the place. Heard it blew an undercover sting with a Priswin quatrain. Hours of HKPF undercover work down the tubes. Yeah, that was pretty funny. It's probably time to shut Jivebot down. Only I'm having a little trouble disabling it. I don't think the real Codex is any more autonomous than Snozzy's poetry bot. If you wanted to create an AI, you'd need some insane programming skills plus resources that some megacorps couldn't even muster. There's no way real AI could just occur at random. Jivebot, join us. Ooh. Bound to my kindred, free agent, no more. Gladly I go towards the light. Infused with the jive, our verse is unstoppable. Tremble, meat-bound fools. Jivebot? Still there? Oh no. Tin Helmet, you're having us on, right? No friggin' way this is real. No joke, Hackathon. That was awesome. Uh, indeed. Alrighty. Looking for Decker. Looking for experienced Decker for a discreet milk run delivery, blah 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 blah. 
You got a long list of happy clients indeed. Now let's look at the new requirements. You must not take experimental stims doing runs. Check. You must not tamper with chemicals in secret labs. Check. You must know how to properly operate a moped. Check. <laughs> you must have a good sense of humor. Check. So someone did not know how to operate a moped. Now, I'm new in town. Did a lot of work throughout Guangdong and had a lot of Taiwanese connections and it got a little uncomfortable. Plus, I may have hacked a confederation server and cracked it wide open temporarily for a matrix free-for-all as a cover while I quietly deleted selected intelligence files. Shen Zhen Zhou. Impressive. And you know how to ride a moped, right? Uh, yes. Why do you ask? We just... Mopeds were part of our last plan and, well, our last decker apparently had not a clue. Went off a residential road near the peak. Not pretty. And you're not the kind of person to experiment with substances during runs, right? And you can walk without falling, yes? These are some crazy interview questions. Are you serious? Very. Let's talk about this face to face, okay? <laughs> well, hopefully they have found their Decker. Let's hope. Alright, so much for that. No new inboxes, despite the fact it says I have one unread message. Now, we need to think about what we want to do for our next job, but we've got a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and talk to Ractor, because I want to see if I can hand this drone off to him. Ractor's shop is alive with motion. Wall-mounted tools hammer and spark, each according to its own rhythm. The cacophony reverberates in the metal confines as the converted engine room, attacking your ears as the light of an... Acetylene torch stabs you in the eye. <laughs> My friend, you've come back. Ractor turns towards you. His boots are off, and you can see the metallic gleam of his feet. Freed from the confines of his boots, the appendages have unfolded. Clawed, gripping toes splay out in all directions, at least eight to a foot. They look alien and predatory, like the talons of some great carnivorous bird. Like General Grievous. I wasn't convinced that you'd want to continue our little chats after the last time. From under his desk, a glint of light catches your eye. Koshi, I'm glad that I was wrong. Hmm. Are you kidding? I wouldn't miss our talks for the world. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear you say so. I would rather enjoy them myself. He turns, the sound of metal on metal filling your ears. So, what shall we talk about? Hmm. Well, were you? Yeah. Any thoughts about that last run? I must commend our ghoulish friend for his planning and organizing this run. We solved the problem for him, diverted attention away from ourselves, and got paid in the process. Not bad. Not bad at all. What's more, this activity gave me the opportunity to test Koshi's combat effectiveness against one of the premier paramilitary organizations in the Sixth World today. The Red Samurai are no slouches when it comes to warfare, as you well know. Oh, such a proud moment, watching my little creation hold his own against them. I must confess, when the last of our enemies fell, my heart felt it felt fit to burst. A great victory, my friend. A great victory all around. Now, what else would you have of me? Uh, Ractor? What's up with your feet? <laughs> oh, the replacements that I was fitted with all those many years ago. The many talon-like toes that splay from his feet claw at the ground, scraping against the metal flooring. They have been modified somewhat between then and now, as you can see. Improved. Hmm. What animal did you base your redesign on? Oh, the claws were inspired by the harpy eagle. Quite a majestic creature. A hunter of primates, you know. He smiles. The quantity was driven by artistic license. Impractical, perhaps, but they please me all the same. I see that the shop is up and running again. What are you working on now? More options for Kochi, as always. He is still far from perfect, but every iteration inches him closer. Hmm. I have questions for you about something you mentioned last time. The corner of his mouth lifts into a wry smile. Yes, I imagine you do. Go on then, ask away. Hmm. You said that you were diagnosed as a psychopath when you were eight. What led to that diagnosis? Eh, my mother had me tested. She always kept a watchful eye on me. Obsessively so, truth be told. It was a rather poor way to experience childhood. 
Hmm. Why was she watching you? What did you do? Eh, very little. She blew my childhood behaviors out of proportion, I'm afraid. The woman had always been motivated by fear. He sighs. Well, she had her reasons, I suppose. What reasons are you talking about? Ah, uh, malignant narcissism runs in my family. None of the men of my line have understood the concepts of conscience or empathy, and they wouldn't have had much use for them if they had. My grandfather was an abusive drunk who killed his own brother with a gasoline-powered ice auger. Holy crap. My father was a terror to his employees and assistants, a shark in a business suit. I suppose that my mother expected me to follow in their footsteps. And haven't you? Yes, I suppose that I have. But it wasn't by choice. Had I been left in peace, had my supposed friends not stolen what was dearest to me, I might never have ta walked, taken to the shadows. My path was set by others, not by myself. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not, though. Yeah, perhaps you're right. I might have gone on to be a serial killer, or worse. There's no sense in debating such things. Things happen as they did, and we are both the better for it, are we not? Surely it is advantageous to have me on the team. Oh, indeed, Ractor, it's good for us that you're here. <laughs> the corner of his mouth tilts upward. Well then, there you have it. So after you were diagnosed, what happened? He shrugs. I learned that was what was expected of me. The doctor was very helpful in that regard. He offered false hope and placebos and false promises that he could cure me and my family at his price. And to me, he offered an escape. All that I had to do was play along, and my problems would be solved. It wasn't difficult to pretend that I had been cured. Once I understood the outward signs that my mother was looking for, I was able to ape them well enough. In time, my mother came around. So you lied then? You pretend to be cured when you weren't? Yeah, I put on a mask, both for my own benefit and for the benefit of my family. I knew what would happen if I didn't. If I had been caught, and my mother's scrutiny would have only increased if I didn't convince her that I was better. My grandfather lived out his final days in Black Dolphin Prison. Do you know the place? No? Is it anything like a Supermax prison in the UCAS? In terms of conditions, it's far worse. Black Dolphin is one of the most appalling detainment facilities in Russia, and that is saying quite a lot. I was determined not to wind up trapped in such a place. I am not an animal to be caged. Ractor bends down and runs his fingers over Koshi's <laughs> chassis. The drone stands motionless, the lenses of its many optical sensors focused on you. In any case, there you have it. I'm glossing over many of the details, of course, but I'd rather not discuss my childhood any further. Instead, let us think to the future and to the promise that it holds. Hmm. So, in your ideal future, people without empathy, morality, or humanity will replace the rest of us. That sound about right? Yes, people like me. Tell me, my friend, how does that make you feel? What is your gut reaction to the vision that I have shared with you? Hmm. It terrifies me. He frowns knowingly. Of course it does. You do not share our selective advantage. You see what is to come, and it repels you. For a man in your position, it is only natural. Revulsion is the expected response. I promise you, my friend, if you move past your atavistic reaction, you'll see how right this is. The sixth world is no place for compassion. It's a predatory world, a world of monsters. Some of those came with the awakening, and others are of their own design, but they are there. And if we are to survive, we need to shed those weaknesses that prevent us from competing with them. I speak with the clarity of a man who is not a man, in mind or in body. The things that others refuse to see are as plain to me as the light of day. I tell you, my friend, life is better this way. One day, you will see for yourself, and you'll thank me for what I have shared with you. Well, if, you what, if what you believe is true, if people with your condition will inherit the Earth, how long do you think that can last? Indefinitely. What makes you ask? Hmm. Well, psychopaths are born predators. Ever heard of a natural ecosystem that's made up of nothing but predators? You're suggesting that we'll burn ourselves out, annihilate ourselves. I will concede that this is possible, but I think it unlikely. This is the sixth world, after all. 
Even if meta-humanity is supplanted by post-humanity, there will be other forces at work in the world. He will not be alone. Hmm. You're talking about the supernatural? Dragons, spirits, that kind of thing? Yes. Any form of intelligence that cannot or will not make the leap that we will make. Dragons and spirits would qualify. So would any meta-human holdovers that cling to their natural bodies. Artificial intelligence intelligences could also prove problematic. And your solution for dealing with these problematic species would be? Uh, that remains to be seen. Ideally, we would take the we would we would take the cleanest, simplest approach to dealing with them. What that approach might be, uh, what that approach might be, would depend as much on them as it would on us. The corner of his mouth tilts upward. The smile contains no warmth. I, for one, am looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. Aren't you? <laughs> so, where do we go from here, Ractor? Forward, my friend. Always forward. Silently, Koshi studies you, its articulated pedipalps weaving hypnotically. You'll join me, won't you? The future beckons the both of us equally. Follow me, and I will guide you into a better tomorrow. I can think of nothing that would please me more. Nothing can please you. Hmm. Tell you what, because I love, I love this character. We'll agree to disagree about your perfect future. For the present, though, you have my support. Very good, my friend. If nothing else, I will have ample time to convince you. But in the immediate future, there's a small matter of the walled city to contend with. I will, of course, continue to help you as best I can. I need allies as badly as you do, and it is in my best interest to keep them alive. Hmm. I'm gonna be blunt about it. It's in my best interest to keep you alive, too. You're the most interesting person on this boat. He chuckles. Yes, I suppose that I would be. And I can appreciate the sentiment. I tend to discard things that bored me long before. Or, that bored me before long. And now, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. I'll catch you on our next run, Ractor. He nods, smiling. And I you. Goodbye, my friend. And good night. Alright, well, no job with Ractor just yet. Haven't found his friends. But we'll go ahead and end the episode here. I guess we can go ahead and sell off the drone stuff. I'll go ahead and do that right now while I think about it. And, oh, is that's the... Hold up. Open the jobs directory. Sell the experimental Renraku drone. There we go. You send a quick email to Kindly Chang, informing her of the drone you've recovered from Renraku. A few moments later, a message pops onto the screen. 1500. Brave of you to do side work without telling me, or stupid. Take your pick. Luckily, Auntie Chang knows plenty of buyers for your new toy. I'll send a finder's fee over to you right away. Indeed. Okay. So far, so good. Got a little bit of money. That's always a good decision. And we didn't have to kill Maximum Law. So, now we'll end the episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.